Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening's meeting of the Audit and Governance Committee on the 16th of April, 2024. Uh, thank you all for your attendance. We'll go straight into the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. Uh, I've got apologies from Councillor Maycock and Councillor Thurgood. Uh, and I believe Councillor Daniels is running slightly late. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, agenda item number two, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, moved by Councillor Pritchard. Seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you. Any declarations of interest from anybody? There are none. Okay, that brings us on to agenda item number four, which is the review of the Treasury Management Strategy Statement, Minimum Revenue Provision Policy Statement, and Annual Investment Statement 24-25, and the Treasury Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy Mid-Year Review Report 23-24. I'll hand over to uh, the ex Executive Director of Finance to present Thank the report. You. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So uh, the re Treasury Management Strategy and the Minimum Revenue, Revenue Provision Policy Statement <coughs> and Investment Statement were approved at February um, Council meeting. Um, sorry. So they were all approved alongside the budget. Um, the Treasury Management Strategy looks at the overall strategy for all our, our Treasury Management activity throughout the year. It sets the template within which officers uh, manage and operate our Treasury, ma Treasury Management function, and it's aimed to limit the risks involved in, in the whole process. So and members will have received training back in, in February this year on the Treasury Management from Link Asset Management. Uh, our, um, um, who provide us our expert advice on, on Treasury management. Um, and then also considered in this report is the Treasury management and uh, investment strategy mid-year review that was considered in September uh, 24, 23, sorry. No, 12th of December 23. <coughs> so um, that report had all the Treasury management um, prudential code indicators um, that look at about the affordability and the monitoring against uh, the activity, treasury management activity during the year and the compliance with the strategy. Um, they're, they're quite detailed reports um, and I understand that, that you know, they're quite lengthy and um, I, I don't want to go through them line by line today, but if, if please, I'm more than welcome any, any comments and anything that you don't understand. Um, or you'd like to ask questions on, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Has anybody got any questions, comments on the report? No? Is there any uh, recommendations? I've got no recommendations. Yep. Thank you. Okay, uh, if there's no uh, comments or questions, thank you for the report. Um, there is a recommendation um, which is to consider the Treasury Management Report as detailed within the reports attached to Appendix A and B and highlight uh, and any highlighted changes uh, for recommendation to Cabinet. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? As unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Um, we'll move on to agenda item number five, which is the 2023. Two and 23 restated statement of accounts. Uh, again, I'll hand over to the uh, Director of Finance. Thank you. So, members will have received the draft statement of accounts back in September and it uh, was approved by this authority, um, sorry, by, by this, um, this meeting. Um, and the reason that we've brought it back is we the delegated authority to the chair to sign the accounts off. Um, but in the time that it's taken to get the final audit of the pension fund accounts, there's been further guidance from SIPFA about the treatment of some of the, the pension asset valuations in the accounts. And these, these um, items, um, the change in the valuation is quite material, which is why we're bringing it back for further approval, because I, I didn't feel it was appropriate just for the chair to sign it off without bringing it back to your attention. So the changes are in line with the treatment of the, um, of the valuation of the pension fund. 
and we had a, an, a net asset position in the year of just over a million pound. But IFRIC 14 uh, has come into, into, into play since the accounts were, were uh, officially um, were brought before you before. Um, and the, the purpose of that is to say that the value of the, it needs to be reconsidered against the net, net asset value of the, of the uh, pension fund. So, so, and just, so under the provisions, we're required to measure the net defined benefit asset at the lower of the surplus in the defined benefit plan, which is the one million pound that I was talking about, or the asset ceiling, which is is valuated in a completely different manner, um, and and naturally that that would produce a lower valuation because it's it's produced to say if the if the surplus in the pension fund can be fed back to members or it can be if, if the surplus can be um, result in reduced juiced pension fund um, sorry I just lost where I am in, in reduced contributions from members so it looks at the pension fund and says you've got a surplus in there do we need to feed some of that back or can we take a, a pension holiday for example that's not actually applicable for the local government pension scheme because the assets uh, are, are kept fully in the scheme for the benefit of members in the future so um, the valuation is just at a point in time and and that valuation has changed significantly I can assure members that it doesn't affect the viability of the pension fund and it doesn't affect the impact on council taxpayers or the deficit or surplus of services. So the revenue fund uh, is, is unaffected by this. So um, given that I've just mentioned that the, those amendments are considered to be a material change to the accounts, um, I've brought it back for you. Um, We've got the auditors here, and I'm aware that you've only had the final audit re audit recommendations today. Um, so I, I think um, we're going to bring those to you shortly, uh, one of the next items. So I don't mind if you would, if you prefer to defer the approval of the accounts until you've heard those. Um, I, I'm entirely your, uh, or if you're happy to. Anybody have any comments on that? Are you happy to. Want to defer until we've heard the next item, or? Yeah, we'll just defer until after we've heard the item, which is which item were you referring to? Six annual report. From the the, officers? Yes, so we've got the annual audit report, and also the papers have come out for the um, for the the findings, annual findings from from the audit of the accounts as well. So. Um, normally you would have had those in advance and had a chance to read them before you approved the statement of accounts but I, uh, I'd like to hand you over to the external auditors to, to present their findings so that you're in a, in a more educated position to approve the... Would it help if I do a verbal Sorry, update on the audit findings yes. now and then yes. you can take the decision and then... Yes, yes please. Okay. Um, so... Um, I just wanted to do a, a, it's a very brief verbal update on the findings from the external audit of the financial statements. Um, the vast majority of our kind of audit findings report remains identical to the one that was presented to this committee in September uh, because the audit was pretty much done at that point with just a few outstanding queries. So I was just going to go through the items that were listed as outstanding in that report and just close them down. Um, so uh, we did flag in that report that we hadn't yet finished our testing of uh, journals. Um, that testing is now complete and we did not find any problems. Um, we flagged that we hadn't finished our testing on the valuation of the council's properties. Um, and we have now completed um, all of that work on the dwellings, the investment properties and the other land and buildings. And we haven't found any addition, additional issues other than the few kind of relatively small ones that were reported in September. Um, we have received assurances from the external auditor of the Staffordshire Pension Fund um, and again there's nothing that came out of that work that's caused us any problems. Um, the, one, um, the one change effectively in our audit findings is, is the one that's just been run through by the Director of Finance where um, the pension net asset is now being presented as a net liability due to the application of the net asset ceiling under IFRIC 14. 
Um, so that that has resulted in uh, just under a £7 million swing in that pension figure. Um, but as, as has just been pointed out, that doesn't affect the um, surplus and deficit on provision of services, and it doesn't affect the council's general fund. It's, it's in effect just a technical sort of accounting adjustment. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to flag was that we are proposing uh, an additional fee of £7,500 for that work on the uh, pension adjustment, um, bringing our total audit fee for the year to £89,476. Um, that's all I was going to say, just to confirm effectively what the finance um, update says, that there is just that one adjustment that's gone through the accounts. Anybody got any questions, comments on either of them two items? Councillor Doyle? Can we ask what that asset is? Oh, the total value of the pension fund. And I think it is just worth reiterating the point that you made previously that the actuarial valuation in the council's balance sheet is a very separate exercise to the valuation of the pension fund. Um, this is this is just the calculation of that number in Tamworth's balance sheet. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, comments? Nope. Okay, so um, oh, we have a question, Sarah, Councillor Daniel, sorry. Sorry. My mistake. That's clearer. I may not be the only person who heard seven million and just went, but the expressions that I'm seeing in this side of the room seem to suggest that people are clear about what they're doing, what it means, why there's the actions, and if you guys seem secure, then I'll sit back and not worry about seven million. Thank you. Okay, so we've got recommendations for item five and item six. We'll take them separately. Um, the recommendation for item five, which was the restated statement of accounts, is to approve the annual statement of accounts 22-23. I think I'm moving a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favour? That is carried in the unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and then agenda item six is... To endorse the report, we um, to endorse the report. Uh, again, move for a second for that. Oh, okay. We'll hold fire on that one, and we'll uh, we'll take that recommendation shortly. No problem. Uh, I'll hand back over to uh, Grant Thornton then. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, I was planning to keep the. Uh, the presentation of this report relatively brief. Um, this is our report on the council's arrangements to secure value for money during the 2022-23 financial year, so the financial <coughs> year that ended a year ago, effectively. Um, this is uh, a obviously a narrative report. We're required to report uh, across <coughs> three key areas, being the council's arrangement to secure financial sustainability, the council's governance arrangements, and the council's arrangements to secure improvements in economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. Um, coming out of this report, um, there are uh, different levels of recommendation that we can raise. The lowest level of recommendation would be an improvement recommendation, so where we think that the arrangements in place are, are, are reasonable and are suitable, but there are some effectively minor improvements that could be made. Um, the next level up would be a key recommendation, where we've identified that there are significant weaknesses in the arrangements. We would, we would look to raise a key recommendation. Um, and if we have any kind of much more sort of serious concerns, then areas where we require 
um, kind of immediate action to be taken, we would look to raise a statutory recommendation. Um, so I just wanted to kind of put that context around this report because there are improvement recommendations in here, but there are only improvement recommendations in here. And so this is, in, in, in that context, this is a relatively positive report. Um, so we didn't find any significant weaknesses in the council's arrangements. There are a small number of improvement recommendations um, in two of the three areas of the report. Um, I wasn't planning to go through it in any detail unless anyone had any questions. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments on that from any members? No? Okay, so uh, the recommendation is to endorse the report. And again, mover and seconder. <laughs> by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that brings us on to agenda item number eight. No, seven. seven, sorry. Audit uh, interim progress report, uh, and this is a report of uh, our external auditors uh, as it. Thanks, Chair. And yeah, just to avoid any confusion, as you know, assets are the external auditors taking over for 23-24. So the purpose of this report is to give an update on our interim work that we've undertaken for the year ended 31st of March 24. So we, we did um, our interim audit back in March now, and it's probably worth making the point that the response times that we've had from management have been excellent, and we've had all the information that, that we've requested, which you'll probably see is reflective within the report, because all of our kind of RAG ratings throughout are green. We have identified already one recommendation that we will be making in relation to parks and open spaces where we noted that the parks and open, spa open spaces weren't separately identifiable within the fixed asset register, but we are comfortable that it's not a material balance. And as soon as Grant Thornton have signed their audit opinion, I will be liaising with Laura Lynn and the team to get access to their files and do our work, which will give us assurance over the opening balances. So again, nothing to draw attention to, no concerns at this stage. We're on track for um, signing the audit opinion in line with the timetables that we've set out with management kind of late summer, September is, is where we're working to. Um, so happy to take any questions, but nothing else to draw attention to. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments from anybody on the interim report? This is just to endorse, right? Uh, yep, so the uh, recommendation on this one is just to endorse the report again. Uh, so if we can get moved in a second. Councillor Clark moved, seconded by Councillor Daniels. All those in favour? Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you for that report. Uh, that brings us on to agenda item number eight, which is the annual review of financial guidance. And this is a report of the Assistant Director of Finance. Thank you. Um, so... As part of the core functions um, for this committee, they're empowered to maintain an overview of the Council's financial guidance. Um, so the last review of financial guidance was approved by this committee in April 2023. And this latest annual review includes the revised tender thresholds under the public contracts regulation within the procurement section. There are updates to the income charging and debt section following approval of the revised corporate credit policy by Cabinet on the 31st of August 2023. There are amendments to some job titles and some minor formatting changes. Um, so the proposed amendments um, to financial guidance are detailed in the Appendix 1 with track changes, so hopefully you can all see them. Um, I'm just asking that the committee endorses the proposed amendments to the Council's financial guidance to take immediate effect. Any questions? I'm happy to, to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? No? We are a quiet bunch this evening. Okay, so the uh, the recommendation is to endorse the proposed amendments to the Council's financial guidance, which will take immediate effect. Can I get a move and a seconder on that, please? Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? That is unanimously carried. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for the report. Um, 
That brings us to uh, agenda item number nine, which is the public sector internal audit standards, quality assurance, and a print in and improvement program. And this is a report of the audit manager. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. On an annual basis, I report to this committee on internal audits compliance with the public sector internal audit standards and also provide a quality assurance and improvement program for the forthcoming year in 2024-25. The standards require that the internal audit comply with those standards and that's required under the accounts and audit regulations 2015. And the public sector internal audit standards also require that we comply with professional best practice and we also assess ourselves against those requirements on an annual basis. The self-assessment has been completed and is contained as Appendix 1. Also linked in with, the, um, with, with that assessment is a quality assurance and improvement programme. And again, I've in included that as Appendix 2 of my report and that provides the actions that will be completed during the year. For completeness, um, I've also included the external quality assessment. Now that was last completed on, in January 2023 and that was reported to the committee on the 22nd of March 2023. Again, I link that through to the Quality Assurance and Improvement Programme for 23-24. And Appendix 3, which is the external quality assessment action plan, shows that those actions were completed by the 31st of March 2024. Um, again, I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have on the on the report. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments on this report? No? Okay. Um, so the recommendation on this one is... Um, I can't even see it. recommendation just to endorse yes. sorry yeah sorry okay uh, so the recommendation is to endorse the internal audits assessment of compliance with the PSIAS uh, which is appendix one uh, that we endorse the QAIP which is appendix two and that we endorse the external quality assessment action plan at appendix three can I get a mover and a seconder for that please yeah, by Councillor Pritchard seconded by Councillor Clark all those in favour as unanimously carried thank you everybody um, so, moving on to agenda item number 10, which is the annual report of the Chair of Audit and Governance Committee, and this is a report of the Audit Manager. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present to the committee the annual report concerning the work of this committee for 2023-24, and ask that the proposed report be endorsed. Best practice from SITFA outlines that the Audit Committee should produce an annual report to promote the role of the committee, account for its performance and evaluate whether the committee continues to meet its terms of reference. Appendix 1 of my report outlines the report for endorsement and has also been circulated for comments to the Chair of the Committee prior to this meeting. The Chair's comments have been made and included in the, in the annual report. The annual report will require minor updates to include attendance of the committee members at tonight's meetings and also the final confirmation of the matter discussed prior to submission to full council. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Any questions or comments from members? A uh, question from Councillor Clark. Um, just to thank you, like, um, I know for myself coming in as a new member, there was a lot of like training needs and things like that and, and new sort of jargon. Um, so just thank you for all the support that everyone has given on, on this committee. Um, still don't know everything, but <laughs> it's. Uh, I know if I've got a question, I can come to one of you guys, and yeah, it's a massive help. So And pass my thanks on to everyone who's been involved as well on the team. Thank you very much. Any further questions, comments? No. Nope. Okay, so the uh, recommendation is that we endorse the proposed annual report of the Audience and Governance Committee. Uh, moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? That is unanimously carried. Thank you very much. Uh, this brings us on to our last agenda item, but before, it's only a discussion item, so if any officers would like to leave at this point, you are welcome to do so, or you can hang on for two minutes. It's completely up to yourselves. Okay. Um, so, uh, agenda item number 11 is the Audit and Governance Committee timetable. Um, which one, sorry? Have you got them? I'm just going to hand over to uh, to 
Andrew for that. Because I don't have it, I'm afraid. Yes, the, the Audit and Governance Committee timetable effectively outlines the work of the, of the committee during the year. Um, obviously, we're now at the end of the municipal year, so basically the timetable has now been completed. And then taking forward the Audit and Governance Committee timetable, we'll roll that forward into the new municipal year so that we've got all the items in relation to, to those, those, those areas. Um, again, I don't know if any other officers have got any comments in, in relation to that. The one thing that we will try and do is obviously look at the timing of those um, agenda items for the new municipal year and then work them within the, within the time, time scales for the, um, for the Audit and Governance Committee in 24-25. Okay, thank you. Has anybody got any questions or comments? No? Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of this evening's agenda. Um, before I close the meeting, I would just like to thank um, our representatives from Grant Thornton for their work this year. Also, our representatives from ASET for their work um, since they've joined. Uh, and thank officers for uh, your work this year. Also, thank members for your contributions to the committee. Um, and yes, I will close the, the meeting um, at...